On this week's XJ Talk Show, we steer away from the norm and hear about a recent wheeling trip Josh took with the Jolly Jeepers in the Tillamook State Forest. That's right, Tony. I had one crazy wheeling adventure, and in the first part of this interview, I tell you guys about all the mayhem I had to go through to even get to this event. I'll also tell you about some catastrophic carnage a fellow wheeler suffered and the very unique method we used to get him off the trail. Mickey G calls into the show with a couple of voicemails, and I get a review on the new 44-inch LED light bar I just put on my own Jeep. All on the next XJ Talk Show. The XJ Talk Show is for entertainment purposes only. Any advice or information provided on this show should be verified by alternative sources prior to making any changes or modifications to your vehicle. We are not experts, just people that enjoy the Jeep hobby and don't mind talking endlessly about it. P.S. We love you. And now, breaking news from the XJ Talk Show News Desk. This week, no intro. We now return you to the regularly scheduled program. Yes. You already know about Yes, X- you do. <laughs> Welcome to the XJ Talk Show. You are listening to the Jeep Cherokee Premier Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Tony and Josh. Take it away, boys. Yes, indeedy. It's episode 139, and uh, we're going to do, be doing something kind of special tonight. You know me as uh, Tony or Mudderoy on uh, xgtalk.com, and uh, here's my co-host. Uh, what was your name again, sir? Yosh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know me as Northwest 99XJ or uh, NW99XJ over at xjtalk.com, and as Tony said, we got a little something different for you guys tonight. You, I think you guys are going to enjoy this. Yeah, we're uh, Josh went on a wheeling trip this uh, this past weekend, and so much happened prior to the the wheeling trip, during the wheeling trip that we thought that would be a great opportunity to change things up a little bit in the uh, the stream of the shows, if you will, and uh, talk a little bit uh, to basically do a, a Yash interview uh, of what all he went through uh, this uh, this weekend, getting ready and then going and then uh, getting back. So I don't want to give too much of it away. So no Amazon, you bought what tonight, but we'll be doing that next week. And uh, if you don't know what that is, Josh is going to tell you about it right now. Yep, guys, we have a great relationship with Amazon.com, and we highly encourage you guys to, well, support your favorite off-road podcast, the XJ Talk Show, by heading over to xjtalk.com or xjtalkshow.com and finding the Amazon banner right there on the main page. You click on that, it takes you right over to Amazon.com, where you can buy any old little thingamajig you want, uh, including Jeep parts if you'd like. And uh, Amazon's agreed to give us a little small little kickback out of that purchase. You guys don't pay a red cent more, not a single dime more, but Amazon uh, gives us a little kickback, and they give us a list of things that have uh, that have been bought, and uh, <laughs> we have some fun with that list, as you guys have heard in prior shows. So normally, uh, this would be the uh, the week that we would do that. Uh, we're going to reserve that for next week. So in the meantime, keep up that shopping, and we thank you guys for your support. Absolutely, it's always fun to read through those Amazon you bought what items too. Uh, oh. You never yeah. know what you're going to find. It's a a virtual potpourri. Like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been having some fun with my Jeep, and uh, no, uh, not oh, not off road. Uh, yeah, I've uh, I've been seeing some posts. I've been seeing some videos. You've been uh, you've been active. You've been doing some mounting and some wiring. What the heck is with these runway lights that you've been putting on your Jeep? <laughs> well, I am close to an airport, and uh, if there was ever a pow- power outage, I'd be able to roll out there and uh, not not the big jumbo jets or anything, but the uh, uh, the small airplanes, the twins, the uh, I think that runway is probably uh, long enough for a small jet, uh, but I'll be able to roll out there and uh, guide them in. Uh, Don't sell yourself short, Tony. From the videos that I've seen, you could see that Jeep from space. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was uh, adjusting the light bar today, and uh, well, here's a picture. Uh, Josh, cover your eyes. Uh, here's a picture of uh, of the little Shit. Jeep, uh, and uh, boy, has it changed from the... Uh, the early days when we brought it home with uh, 19 miles on it, and uh, uh, it's been a, a fun adventure. Uh, this is a, a picture that I took about uh, 7.30 this evening, uh, so the sun was uh, still very much up, and mm-hmm. uh, you can see that these lights are very much bright. So uh, <laughs> my, uh, my daughter and I actually went out and uh, did a little uh, test of these uh, these lights. Now, they weren't adjusted. That's what I was doing today. I was adjusting these things because 
uh, they they seem to have built them kind of pointing down a little bit, which is good. You know that way you can yeah. you can mount them uh, perpendicular to the vehicle and uh, still get um, the light where it needs to go. But uh, I had them angled down a little bit, so I think that's why this uh, this uh, I didn't get quite the distance in the light. But anyway, let's look at this uh, this video that I did real quick. It's it's up on YouTube. You can hear the the noise of the Jeep there. So that's the the seven inch lights that I just turned on. Here comes the twenty. That's the twenty inch, and then the uh, the forty four inch that I just put on uh, a couple of weekends ago. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's exactly what my daughter said. <laughs> if you guys don't know, uh, you know, just listening to the podcast, uh, what what Tony did is he is he uh, kicked his daughter out of the jeep and put her on the side of the road. And- and uh, had, he drove back a ways, and then uh, you, you're hearing some uh, some difference in audio, uh, some in in cab uh, in cab audio, and then it kind of goes silent, and you hear the crickets and stuff like that. You're actually seeing uh, a, a snapshot going back and forth between uh, when he's turning on the lights in the cab, and then uh, you know uh, you know uh, smash cut to uh, uh, to the you know outside view, and, and back and forth like that. So you really get a good comparison, not only from inside the jeep but also from outside the jeep coming at you which i'm surprised didn't uh, completely shut down the optics of the camera because it is so dang bright yeah it's it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty amazing and i don't know how you how about you guys but from just a very little age i uh, i had this uh, affinity for uh wristwatches timex specifically and just love to have me a nice new wristwatch and a flashlight and the brighter the flashlight the more i loved it and i'm telling you I'm loving it now because I have one of the brightest flashlights. <laughs> so uh, it was pretty funny. I uh, after I did that video, I put it up uh, up on Twitter, and uh, I uh, to entice people to watch it. I said, "Ever seen what forty six thousand five hundred lumens looks like?" Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, gee, I'm forgetting his name right now. His his first name is Phil. Uh, Phil in the UK has a, a 300 watt 50 inch uh, LED light bar on his along with some LED headlights and uh, he's put up some videos and he says uh, no but I have seen uh, 50,000 and <laughs> 500 oh, lumens you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so my response to him was Phil I'm not talking to you then am I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we had some fun there on Twitter and uh, got that got that video up so uh, Josh did a great job explaining uh, what the video looked like, but take take a few moments to go over to YouTube. Not right now. Stay here with the show. But uh, jump over to YouTube.com uh, slash XJTalk and see the video yourself. It's nice and short, 50 seconds long, and uh, you kind of get a feel for it. I'll be making another one because, uh, like I said, I adjusted those lights. Now, Josh, what yes. the, what in the world are we going to be talking about tonight? I mean, uh, what, what 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 I don't I don't want to get into it too much, but what what's going on? Why is this thing so special that we're going to forego the entire format of the show to talk about what Josh did off road? Well, look, I mean, first off, uh, I, you know, I'm nothing special, uh, but no, I uh, this is an, an annual wheeling trip that uh, that I I participate in every year. I look forward to it every year. Um, this year, I was a week off on my dates. I, I thought I had another week to prepare for this. And, uh, and the weekend before I actually, I think it was like the Monday or Tuesday before, uh, I found out that, uh, oh no, indeed it is going to be, you know, this weekend. And, and that was, uh, uh, the weekend of the, uh, what was you, what is that? The 19th, uh, yeah, the, the 19th and the 20th. And, uh, uh, so I, I, I was completely unprepared. I thought I had another week. I, I was planning on the weekend of the event, um, actually doing all the work that I that I needed to do. I just did some tidying up, some last minute things, and and uh, and one of the things was the um, uh, new bushings in my leaf springs, and that was really the major thing that I needed to get done. And uh, and I, I first before I go any further, I got to give a, a big shout out and a huge thanks uh, to ninety two War Wagon uh, Wes. He's a local jeeper to me. He's helped me out before. Uh, I've helped him out before. He's a fan of the show. Uh, he's a big supporter of the show as well. Uh, loves the site, uh, and and I just can't give him enough props for for coming over uh, and not only lending some moral support, but also um, you know a third hand when I when I definitely needed it. 
and uh, and I couldn't have probably done this without him. So uh, big thanks to Wes for uh, for helping me out there. So um, well, these should, leaf spray hey, should we go ahead and start the uh, start the the photos now? Yeah, go ahead and start the photos. We got some photos I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, just some stuff I kind of took. And I, I took a lot of pictures. I took a lot of video. And I've even had some videos up on YouTube. Uh, you could probably find those just by going to uh, finding one of my YouTube channels, JB Chill One. That's J B C H I L L and the number one. And uh, and we'll go ahead and link those up in the in the show notes afterwards. I uh, got some just a, just a couple of videos with the GoPro and stuff like that, I can share with you guys. Uh, probably not going to see those during the show, uh, but the pictures we'll go ahead and and, and we'll I'll post up kind of like a slideshow for you guys who are uh, viewing the live show. And for you podcast viewers, make sure you head over to our xjtalk.com YouTube channel. Uh, check out the show, and you can actually uh, kind of listen to the podcast and see some pictures and play along, as it were. So, uh, but my so, least, so what we're looking at here is it looks like you already got the bushing out of. No, uh, actually, I didn't. That is oh the my condition God, that's of horrible. The yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was uh, it was a necessary uh, repair that I needed to do. The shackles were actually bouncing around inside of the leaf spring eye, and uh, and it had been clunking around for the last couple few wheeling trips. And it wasn't until I think the last wheeling trip that I really nailed it down to what it was, isolated the sound to what it was, and it was the leaf spring bushing was completely shot. Now these are the Pro Comp um, three inch leaf springs. And uh, I picked these up, uh, geez, many, many years ago. And th they've actually done quite well for me, um, you know, over the years. Yeah, uh, over the years, they've. Yeah, I was going to say, ahead. how long, how many, how many years would you say it took to get them this way? Oh, I'm going to say four, four, five. Uh, yeah, a good five years. And you've probably been wheeling. Oh, lots. Twenty-four times, thirty-six times, in that in that that amount of time, because you go quite often. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say anywhere between 25 and 35 times, you know, over over those years. I, I go several times a year, um, and, uh, and you know, I, it's not just logging roads. It's not just backcountry stuff. Yeah, no, guys, you go rocks. I, I wheel, and I, I don't like the mud too much, but it is. It's it's mountainous, um, dirt. You know, lots of rock. Um, you know, steep trails, lots of elevation change and whatnot. Uh, but these things have held up honestly fairly well through the abuse that they've had to go through. Not also that, not to mention that, but they've also been my daily driver for a long, long time. Out of those five years or so, uh, you know, three good, a good three plus years of those were daily driving, and you know, that's uh, that was anywhere from sixty to eighty miles a day uh, that these things were were getting abused through, and, and then you know, adding the the wheeling on top of that. So um, I'm not surprised that they wore out. I mean, it, it's it's rubber. Uh, with a uh, you know a metal sleeve in the middle of it, and the whole thing is encased in another metal sleeve. So it's a it's a rubber metal sandwich basically, and they're pressed into the leaf spring eye itself. Well, I was thinking that it was just going to be a simple matter of pressing these things out, mm -hmm. uh, but not so much. Uh, it was actually quite the ordeal to get these things out, and in fact, just the one, and and there was one one that was worse than the other. It was the um, the the passenger side. Uh, that really took the took the brunt of the abuse, and that's from the Jeep torque. As uh, you accelerate, it's just a matter of the which way the gears turn and and how the torque is applied to the rear axle. That the it, it, the the Jeep wants to sag down to the passenger side as you accelerate. And uh, excuse me, and, and that that's the leaf spring that's going to take the most abuse. Um, and that, that leaf spring eye bushing obviously is the, is what really took the toll. So what are we so, seeing uh, in the second picture? It it looks like you've got a sleeve inside there. I don't think this is. Uh, I don't think you've taken it out yet. No, that is the basically the stock sleeve. I, I you can just pull that in and out. Now the rubber oh. is still fused to the outer shell, which is pressed into the leaf spring bushing. But that inner that inner sleeve literally could just be pulled out with your finger. Yeah. And that's what the, the, you know, the bolt that goes through the shackle, through the leaf spring, that's what the bolt sits through in that. And that's just sitting there and rattling around. And, and there's really only rubber from about, you know, if you're looking at a face of a clock, there's really only rubber from about, you know, seven or eight o'clock back down to about five o'clock. So, I, so I, I guess it's a, it's a trade off. You can have something that's soft and give you a better ride. Or you can have something that's hard and it won't lose its shape over time, but it's going to be a rougher ride. So I'm sure mm -hmm. that's what happened here. That was a, uh, a combination yeah. of uh, uh, form and functionality, if you will. But uh, so, but maybe I'm jumping ahead here. Did you did you go back with the same type of bushing? Uh, yes, and 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 here's why is because I wasn't sure. You know, I could have ordered some polyurethane bushings, but I wasn't sure exactly if they were going to fit for one. 
if they were going to work right. You know, I've got some polyurethane elsewhere in the Jeep, um, but I wanted to make sure that I was getting something that I knew 100% that was going to work no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so I went with a direct replacement from oh, ProComp. Yeah. You knew what you knew what that what to expect. That was a long exactly. time too. Yep, exactly. So, um, you know, called up my local four wheel parts and, uh, and, uh, Tom here at the, uh, the Portland, Oregon four wheel parts store really came through for me. Um, they didn't, they, they don't stock these things. Now, of course they're a pro comp authorized dealer. Uh, so they, it was just a matter of calling up pro comp and saying, Hey, we need a set of these. And they actually drop shipped them, got them to the store overnight and I got them the next day. So, um, way cool on that. But the thing was, is these things were such a pain in the butt to get out over five hours to get one bushing out of the leaf string. <laughs> Gosh. I, so, I thought, so, okay, you know, get, get some PB blaster in there, yeah. get my press tool up in there and, uh, and start going to work and trying to get these things pressed out. Uh, was that enough? No, no, so, no, no. So, I'm, I'm, so I'm looking at the picture with the big ass C clamp, as I call it. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that that didn't budget hardly at all. No, it really didn't. Uh, in fact, I mean, I was I was torquing on that thing so hard that uh, I was worried that I was going to break the leaf spring or break the uh, break the C clamp itself. And this is, folks, the the C clamp that you're seeing in the picture. This is a it's a Harbor Freight four wheel drive ball joint service tool is its official mm -hmm. name. Um, but I've used it for every U joint that I've ever done on my Jeep and friends Jeeps. Um, it's it's a probably one of the most handy tools for working on your Jeep as far as pressing things in and out. So long as you've got the leverage, that thing will hold up, and uh, and it's certainly done very very well for me uh, over the years. Now, now th that the the press played an integral part, uh, but really on the passenger side, things were so bad it, it took you know hitting it with a with a chisel. Um, I, I got in there with a saw at one point and actually cut the sleeve to try and get things to be you know bent out and and everything and. Um, Tony, if you go to the next slide, you can you guys can actually see you know just how much internal <laughs> carnage I had to go through to get this bushing to to actually move and budge. Uh, and and I think just, I would have been going, "What's holding it in?" <laughs> seriously, I mean, it was so it was fused in there, absolutely fused in there. And so those of you who have uh, you know had to go through a shackle replacement um, or, or you know trying to get out uh, the the old leaf spring bushings, you you guys know what I'm talking about. The metal just fuses to the the metal of the bushing. The outer metal sleeve of the bushing fuses to the leaf spring, and and that's what you see in this next picture. Is is I, I had to you know cut this thing, get in there with. And I actually broke different uh, two different screwdrivers, um, trying to you know get little bits pried out. I had a cold uh, a cold chisel in there that I, I was using to hammer through it as well. I mean just with a BFH and literally four plus hours of just banging, banging, banging away at this. And it finally started to budge, but not oh. before I had to basically cut the thing in half, start folding yeah. it in on itself. I bet you, you were very happy at that moment where you look at it, you kind of blink. Did it really move? Yes, exactly. it's that, that moving. Was it. I was, you know, <laughs> you know, cranking it, you know, well, it, it, hammering on it, and then, okay, well, we got it to move, you know, kind of bend in on itself a little bit. Let's see if we can't get the press tool back in there and get some action with the press. And, and you know, you hear the big, you know, kunk as it kind of uh, releases a little bit yeah. and you break that bond between the two layers of metal. And it was like, Oh, did, did something just break or did it move? You know? And so you're, you know, coming around <laughs> to the other side, looking, Oh, we got movement, you know? And finally, so that's the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel almost at that point. And, um, and, and finally after so many hours and, you know, just a dead arm of, you know, hang, you know, with that, uh, you know, big sledgehammer, uh, you know, just banging away at that thing. Did it finally come out? And, uh, and we're able to, you know, I cleaned up the race filed away the burrs that, that were created there. I got in there with a good bastard file and cleaned things up a little shot of grease in there <laughs> on both the outside of the bushing, uh, and the, uh, and, and, uh, and of course in the leaf spring and then with my press tool pressed in the new bushing and it just, you know, well, popped right in. I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the metal sleeve that uh, out with, uh, next to the, the new one. And, uh, <laughs> you can see that looks like somebody dropped a turd on the ground. Uh, it just, it, was, it looks bad. <laughs> it, it was, it, it was, it was bad. I mean, just uh, what I had to go through and what that thing had to go through to actually come out, uh, you know, obviously it was, it, nothing could have been, you know, used out of that again. Uh, and you guys see here in the, during the live show, we show this, I actually, you know, finally have a, a comparison of the, uh, the old versus the new, uh, and you see it is just, now there is no seam when these things come out there, there's no seam on these. I actually had to create a seam by cutting it and by chiseling it in half 
wow. to get it to fold in on itself and, and get enough, uh, you know, tension released before it would actually pop out. And, uh, and finally it did. And now, and now if you cal- just- I'm sorry, if you calculate how much money you make an hour, in other words, what your time is, is worth to you. <laughs> And just re- well, those the replacing, yeah, just replacing <laughs> these bushings. What it would have cost in in relation to the time and effort and parts, as opposed to just putting new leaf springs on and saying, and, you know. And the thought, honestly, uh, Tony, after <laughs> after two or three hours, the thought had crossed my mind. You know, screw it, I'm just going to go down and go buy some new leaf springs. Yeah, you know, at this point, I, I was just like, well, this isn't coming out. I need something. I'm just going to go buy some new leaf springs. And it was, no, 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 we, you know, don't give up. Let's, you know, we'll just keep at it for a little while. You know, it's, I mean, let's, let's, let's do some math here really quick. I got a little calculator here in front of me. I mean, average shop rates right now are about 80 bucks an hour, give mm-hmm. or take, yeah. uh, you know, 80 bucks an hour, uh, here times, you know, five hours. Um, you know, that's, that's $400 right there, not including the 40 bucks in, in parts. Um, but that's just for one person. Uh, you know, so if you got two people at, at 80 bucks an hour, um, times, you know, we're, we're looking at a thousand dollars here for a leaf spring bushing, you know, and that's, yeah. that was just one. So, well, and, the other, and, you, and you had never done this before, so you did not know what to expect. Right. Well, I mean, I knew what I, I knew what I was doing. I just didn't know what to expect out of these. Well, you never, so, and that's just it. You never know when you go to work on something, how long it's going to take. Sometimes exactly. you get lucky. Sometimes you don't. It's it's always a learning experience, and it's a very big relief when everything goes the way you think it was supposed to. So, oh yeah, it's rarely. Honestly, I I think I can count on one hand how many you know out of all the modifications and and tinkerings that I've done on my Jeep, uh, how many uh, have actually gone according to plan, have gone smoothly without a hitch or a hiccup or you know a foobar or something breaking or something like that. So. Um, and of course, you know, as, as it goes with my Jeep and many others, as far as many of our listeners will know, you work on a Jeep, something oftentimes will not go according to plan. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta prepare, you gotta have some time. And, and I was short on time. Yeah. Uh, and so I started early in the morning and, and we were well into the afternoon by this point, getting the one out and, and getting the, the other one in, um, Wes had to take off. He had some family stuff he had to take care of. Uh, so I went around to the other side on the passenger side, got that one knocked out relatively easily. Uh, you know, I did that one all with just a press tool. It came, you know, pressed out and, and the new one pressed in uh, relatively easy. And, uh, and I was on to the next well, thing. Well, here's the shot of the new one pressed in there. And, you know, it looks like that's where it belongs. It's, it's, it's yep. home. That's exactly, it's it went home. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, it was interested in being home. Now it's home and man, it looks a, a hell of a lot better than the other one did. Now I'm going to give you guys a tip. Uh, working on leaf springs by yourself can be a chore. Uh, obviously, you're de- dealing with spring steel. You're dealing with something that has a large arc, uh, and it's you can't just you know put it where you need to. You, oftentimes, you have to manipulate it. Mm-hmm. And if you see in the in this one picture here, and I, I forget for you guys who are podcasting, you're going to have to go and check out the the video for this. Um, but there's a uh, there's a uh, a bottle jack. Yeah. Um, that I used and you just put the bottle jack the base of the bottle jack on the spring you put up a nice little piece of two by four or two by eight two by six you know something like that um, up by the body and and basically you use the body of the jeep as your as your leverage point and using uh, the bottle jack you just kind of screw that bottle jack up and extend it out uh, pressing up against that wood and pressing against the spring and you can manipulate the arc of the spring with the bottle jack and giving yourself a little bit more room to work with if you're doing something above the leaf spring mount uh, into the shackle box or something like that. Uh, even this this works really well for um, you know even uh, replacing leaf springs. Uh, so if you if you are replacing your leaf springs you know during a lift or something like that, uh, and you you need to manipulate the arch, this is a great way to do it. Uh, Hidden Winds XJ says if it goes smooth, something is wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons why I hate going out to the garage because if it, if it went right every time, then uh, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Um, so one thing that did go right though during this whole process was the shackle relocation brackets. Uh, these oh, are the yeah. HD engineering shackle relocation brackets, and and those went together buttery smooth. Uh, installed just like they should. Went together perfectly. Uh, all the hardware was there. Gave him a quick shot of paint while I was, you know, taking a sip of tea and and let my arm rest after oh, yeah. you know banging around and torquing so much. And and the shackle relocation brackets went in uh, very easily. And uh, and so I couldn't be more happier with those as far as the installation process goes. Got that knocked out, um, you know, that that same afternoon. And I have a I have a set of uh, 
uh, Bilstein uh, 5150 shocks that I was going to put in. I didn't get around to getting those in. There was a transfer case skid plate that I wanted to get it in. That didn't go in as well. Oh, no. um, I did uh, take care of um, um, some CB issues that I was having. I could I could I could uh, hear just fine, but my transmitting uh, my transmissions were were coming out a little bit garbled. Uh, so I ended up replacing some coax, tightening up uh, a couple of things, refreshing a ground, and uh, and things worked out pretty good. Uh, in the slideshow, you can see the shackle relocation brackets from HD Engineering Off Road, um, HD Off Road Engineering rather, um, and uh, and these are awesome, uh, very adjustable, uh, very heavy duty, made out of quarter inch steel all the way around, uh, and uh, and and really it's uh, a very nice addition. Certainly one of uh, uh, one of my favorite mods so far, as far as an instant change to the Jeep, the way that it handles and the way that it performs. Now, Josh, this picture that we've uh, had the shackle relocation bracket up there, there was only one. You can tell it wasn't a problem because you only, t it's like the, the good child. You don't take a lot of pictures of the good child. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, uh, we put that one up. But now this, this wonderful picture of the mountain and the skies and the clouds and the green stuff and how could anybody oh. uh, commit suicide in that part of the country? I just don't see it. Really, the Pacific Northwest uh, wheeling uh, wheeling areas offer some of the the most beautiful panoramic scenery that you can possibly imagine. Uh, now, uh, you know the Rubicon itself is 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 an awesome trail down in California. Uh, you know it it has its own spectacular beauty. I'm sure there is there's tons of beauty out in Arizona and Colorado and everything else like that. Um, but you know this this really. This is the kind of stuff that I, I go out and wheel for. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you know, I love I love flexing out a Jeep and, and getting out on the trails and, and seeing what the vehicles can do and stuff like that. That's fun. But, you know, you just don't see these kinds of vistas without, uh, you know, getting out. And, and this is postcard type stuff, guys. This is you got to come mm -hmm. out here to the Pacific Northwest. I'll take you guys up in the mountains. I'll show you some of the stuff. It'll blow your mind. Now, I was but, telling you about so that camera taking pictures that, that, that the, the, the Samsung Galaxies, or at least the, Galaxy the, the two. Galaxy S5. Yeah, the two was great. So I was I couldn't imagine it going downhill, and it doesn't look like it did. Yeah, we've got yeah. the panoramic yes. uh, shot up there now. It's all squinty, though. Yeah, it's a, you know, you kind of get that format, but, uh, you know, if you were able to zoom in on it, it's really, it's really quite sharp, um, uh, still, but, uh, yeah, but that was, uh, that was the spot we broke for lunch. Now I gotta, I gotta stop right here and, and tell you guys there was an adventure unto itself just getting there. So after, um, I, I left the house quite late after everything that I had to do, you know, once I was done working on the Jeep, I mean, I was dirty, I was filthy, I was tired and I hadn't even packed the Jeep yet, let alone coolers and food and, and everything else. So all the camping gear had to come out. Everything had to get loaded into the Jeep. And, and of course, I had to get cleaned up because I knew I wasn't going to be taking a shower for a couple of days. So, um, you know, it was a mad dash to get everything loaded into the Jeep and cleaned up and, and get on the road. And I get about, uh, I'm going to say, 15 miles away from the house and realize that I forgot my extra fuel cans. I forgot my water can. <laughs> you know, I forgot a couple other things. And, and what was and the so, thing I told you last show? <laughs> don't forget your pillow, Josh. <laughs> Not only did I forget my pillow once, <laughs> I forgot my pillow twice because <laughs> I came back to the house after oh, heading out like 15, no. 20 miles. I turned around because I, I actually absolutely had to have extra fuel. And, and of course, you know, I'm not going to go on a, on a three day, you know, two, three day camping trip without water. Um, so I rally back to the house. I grab my fuel cans, load them up onto the roof rack and I rally back out forgetting my pillow for the second time and forgetting my water jugs. So I, uh, I, I stop into a Safeway really quick, into a, in a grocery store, grab a couple bottles of water, grab a couple protein bars because I hadn't had dinner yet either. And, uh, and, and of course, there was only one checker, and I was like 17th in line. And so it was like a half hour literally in this grocery store just waiting for my turn and, and finally get, get in, back into the Jeep, back onto the road. And it's another you know hour and a half now at this point to get out to where I need to be. Well, the gate uh, for the for the staging area uh, for the for the base camp rather uh, closes at ten, and uh, and by this time it was like you know nine thirty, and I still had oh, another hour and a half geez. to go. No, actually it was it was about ten thirty, and I still had another hour and a half to go um, easily. I still had to stop for gas. I, I had stopped for dinner and stuff like that. You know, I, the protein bars weren't going to cut it. Uh, I didn't actually roll into the Tillamook State Forest area recreational area uh, until about one o'clock in the morning. By that time, I knew it was it was way too late. The uh, the gates were going to be closed. Uh, you know, before I lost cell service in Banks, Oregon, I went ahead and and, and made a, a quick phone call. 
uh, out to the buddies who I knew where I was going to be wheeling with say, Hey, uh, I'm not going to make it out there tonight. Uh, if you don't see me and, uh, and, and you know, I don't make it uh, to the staging area in the morning, this is where I'm going to be. Just wanted to give you guys a head up monitor ch- CB channel four. you know, I'll be on that. I'll be trying to get a hold of you guys as I'm coming down the mountain and, uh, and we'll see what happens. So it's like one o'clock in the morning. I'm dog tired. The Jeep's loaded up. I'm, I'm, I'm just absolutely beat. And, and I knew that there was going to be no way I was going to get into the, uh, into the base camp. So I pull off onto the side of the road into a little culvert area, um, park the Jeep off, you know, where, you know, nobody can see it. I, I'm not going to set up camp. I, so I said, screw it. Uh, I'm just going to sleep in the Jeep. Well, the Jeep's full of gear. Mm-hmm. And, and although it wasn't loaded up, like I, I have it loaded when I'm doing, when I'm DJing gigs, there was still quite a bit of gear in there. So I, uh, I pull out my little four and a half foot uh, banquet table thing that I have. And that's usually my, you know, the base for my kitchen area when I'm camping and stuff like that. I kind of rearrange some gear, throw that up on top of everything, l- roll out a sleeping bag. And so I spent the night uh, at that point um, sleeping on top of a four and a half foot banquet table in about five and a half feet of cargo space. And I'm six foot three. <laughs> you do the math. <laughs> I was told there'd be no math. Yes. Right. So, uh, yeah, it was a horribly uncomfortable sleep. It was like 80, 90% humidity. It was just balmy and muggy and it was just a horrible night's sleep. I'm never going off road. That's just it. I'm not going. (laughs) So I slept like, uh, I slept like two or three hours, you know, I woke up, uh, you know, crack of, you know what in the morning and it's like, okay, well, you know, I got, I got to get on, I got to get to the staging area. I got to get to base camp. I've got to go. So no, no coffee. And I think I had a half a bottle of Gatorade left. I downed that really quick and on the road I go. And so I, I've only got about maybe five miles, five or 10 miles left um, before I hit base camp. And there's, you know, one last little, you know, spot of, uh, of civilization. There's a little spot called Alice's Country Kitchen. And it's really actually a fairly good restaurant. Some of the best bacon I've ever had. And uh, I'm and sorry, did I you passed, say bacon or bacon? I, say bacon. bacon. I said bacon. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that, as that I was pass this that was made it all I, worth it right there for right, good bacon well, it was uh, all yeah, worth it no I, there, i'm sorry there's no happy ending to this one <laughs> as i pass as i pass the uh alice's country kitchen and, and the and the, the the base camp is just like another quarter mile past this as i pass alice's country kitchen i noticed the metal cloak tj and that's my that's my buddy kelly and uh and i was like oh geez okay they're down there and so i you know flip a ue in the in the middle of the road really quick head down into the, into the driveway. And I, and I go in there, mind you, I've only been awake for about five minutes now at this point. And, uh, and so I go into the restaurant and, and find them. And, uh, you know, by this time they're done eating, they've already had their coffee. They've already had their breakfast, uh, and they're paying the bill. And they're like, where the hell have you been? You know, <laughs> so I tell them my adventure, you know, up to that point. And they're like, well, come on, we got to go. It's, it's time to stage up. And I'm like, geez. Oh, okay. So, you know, uh, no time for coffee, no time for my own bacon. Um, pop back into the Jeep, head down to head down the road, just a little bit more roll into camp quickly, unload everything out of the Jeep, mm-hmm. load in my tools, spare parts, you know, all the, all the recovery equipment that I'm going to need and everything like that. Uh, you know, grab a quick, little bit of lunch to pack in, throw it in my spare cooler and, and off to the staging area. I, I go, got to take care of registration. So I get my bracelet, I get my stickers, get the number on my windshield and all that stuff. Take care of, uh, all, all that. And, uh, and off we go. So, you know, I'm, I've, I've been up for, you know, all of 15, 20 minutes now and I'm on the road and we got about, you know, 20 miles to head up before we get up to the, to the staging area, um, for the driver's meeting. And, uh, we've got 12 rigs in our group for that day. And, uh, and mind you, this is, this is an event that they only accept a hundred vehicles and, and there was 12 in our group, which is a fairly large group. Uh, when you're talking about a, a single group of, uh, of wheelers heading out on a single trail. And, uh, and so there, there was, you know, a large driver's meeting. There was lots of people that had to air down and disconnect and do all that sort of stuff and, and get ready final safety check and, and all that stuff. And, um, I had a little GoPro video that I've, you know, kind of just walked around the entire group really quick and I air down and, and do my, my final checks and everything like that. And, and off the trail we go. So, uh, we're, we, we hit our, uh, up the logging roads about a mile, mile and a half or so we're, you know, you're doing your five, five, 10 miles an hour, whatever. And, and we, and we pull into the first trail and so it's a UE to get into the trail and it's a very easy trail. Um, we're in three turns of the trail, all of about maybe 75 to a hundred yards of trail that we have traversed so far. And there's a CJ five or CJ seven that ended up snapping both of his, uh, spring perches in the rear axle. Uh, it took 45 minutes to clear him off the trail and, uh, and get him into, into a position where the rest of us could bypass. Um, called out for a volunteer to, uh, to, you know, go back down to base camp with him to make sure he got there. He basically just disconnected his rear drive line 
and, uh, and, and limped his way back down in front wheel drive, uh, back down to base camp. And that was all fine and dandy. We get up to the top of, uh, uh what a trail called Cedar tree. And, uh, it's a very technical trail. There's a very, very large, old, old growth cedar tree, um, in the middle of it that oftentimes people take a, a big photo op with because it's, it's a, there's a huge cutout in the middle of it that if you've got a mildly lifted Jeep or a relatively stock Jeep, uh, you can actually drive under and it's, it's well, everybody loves it. Uh, you know, stopping there for a photo op and, and lunch and everything like that. Uh, we hadn't quite gotten to that point yet. Uh, when we have a, uh, Dodge Dakota in our group completely grenade his steering box dead in the water, no steering response whatsoever. So luckily for not, uh, luckily enough for us, he's in between two trees on the trail and there's a slight little bypass around him. So, uh, we, uh, we, we get onto this trail and, uh, and we're about halfway through this trail and, uh, this Dodge Dakota ends up grenading his steering box and, and he's dead in the water. Um, he's right in between a couple of trees, but there's this little bypass around him that we can get everybody else, um, uh, around him and, and, and get on their way. And, uh, and so we give him a little tug to kind of get him in position. We get the other, you know, uh, nine vehicles out past him, uh, down the rest of the trail off to a logging road. Uh, we've got a ham operator in the group. He radios back down to base camp, uh, to send a new trail lead up because, um, our, our trail lead and myself as the tail gunner, uh, we're going to stay behind and make sure that this guy can get off the trail properly. And so, uh, we got, a, we get, got all that handled. Um, and now it's time to focus on this, uh, on this Dakota trying to get him off the trail. Now he's got like these 15, 15 and a half inch wide, um, uh, TSL or, or, uh, uh, there's just these monster tires. I think they were pit bull rockers or something like that. Oh, so, um, so now we know why the uh, steering box grenaded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got a lot of rotating mass that has a lot of grip and, uh, and it just couldn't, it just couldn't take it. So, um, we, we try and hook up a, a toe strap to him and this is a very technical trail. So, and he's got no steering. So we're, you know, trying to bump the, uh, bump the wheels, pry bars, trying to do anything we can to steer. And it's just not working. There's just too much rotating mass to, to use manpower. So we hook up with this kind of a little bit of a bridle system with some chain, hook that up to the toe strap. And that worked for a good turn or two. Um, but even that wasn't enough. So we hook up a winch cable from the Dakota, um, back to the Jeep and, and back over to the Dakota through, uh, through a, through a snatch block to try and, and get some degree of turning with winch power onto one of the knuckles. Now at this point in time, we already had the drag link disconnected. And so basically it's just the two tires connected with the, with the track bar. And, uh, and that works for about another turn or two, but by, by about, by about that time, the trail starts to get very, very technical. And, and it's just, it's way too much work to try and, and, and use this winch and the toe strap and keep everything in the right geometry to try and make this all work together. And it just, it wasn't happening. He ends up, um, uh, when the other group got back down to base camp, they radio back up, they're sending up a, a truck and a trailer uh, for this guy. And th these guys make record time getting up to the top of the mountain or up to the, uh, where we were. And, uh, and they've got a couple of come alongs. Well, one of them has a come along. We've got a come along in another vehicle and a third come along in another vehicle that end up, uh, joining this little trio of us trying to get this guy off the trail. So what we end up doing is Jimmy rigging these, these, uh, two different come alongs, one side to one axle, uh, or to the, to leaf spring over to the one knuckle from the other side of the frame over to the other knuckle and myself and this other guy take turns ratcheting, you know, with these come alongs, <laughs> um, to try and get the, the wheels to turn. And, you know, so it's, it's ratchet with one come along to get the wheels to turn. Okay. Now you got to move forward about two or three feet to unload the traction on the tires right. then ratchet them the rest of the way to get the wheels to turn where you need to go to get around the corner and then move 20 or 30 feet. Okay. Now we've got to unload the one, um, uh, unload the one ratchet strap, load up the other one, move two or three feet to unload the traction on the tires, ratchet up to get the turn, move 20 or 30 feet. And it's five hours of that in, you know, 90 degree weather, very high humidity, very dusty trails. And, and it was just absolute brutal, brutal torture. Um, and a lot of very physical work to get this guy off the trail. And, uh, you know, throughout this whole thing, you know, I'd have to run back 50 to hundred yards, grab my Jeep, rally back up to catch up, <laughs> you know, back underneath the rig, back onto the ratchet strap, ratchet, 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 turn, I'm, turn, uh, turn. I'm staying home. So after, uh, yeah, five hours of, of, uh, of doing all this manual labor to get this guy off the trail. Now, mind you, I've, I've never met this guy before in my life. I've never wheeled him with, with him before. He's not even a Jeeper. 
Um, granted, he's Mopar, so he had that going for him. So, I mean, if he was a Ford, he might have gotten left behind. I don't know. But, uh, no, it was, you know, it's just one of those things. He, he's off-road brethren, and, uh, and he was in a very critical position to where he was going to be uh, spending a very long, long night. Um, there's no telling, you know, what it was going to take to get him off the trail. Um, and this was, this needed to be done. And, and so myself and, and others, um, that were around, uh, you know, the, the trail lead, uh, and myself, and of course the owner of the vehicle, um, and, and then his buddies who showed up with, uh, with the one come along, um, uh, all just, you know, went to work on this thing and, and got him it's, off the trail. It took it's a great. lot of work. It's great that the people were willing to pitch in and there were the right tools or the tools that could be made to work to, to get the job done. Now, the picture I'm looking at here now is, it looks like a, a, a panoramic view of people in a field sitting in chairs. So once we once we finally got um, him off the trail and onto a trailer, uh, we aired back up and headed back down to base camp, and just enough time to to kind of clean up a little bit and uh, and head over for um, for some they they, uh, they serve us dinner. They, it's a you know usually you know hamburgers and beans and potato salad that sort of thing, and it's just you know one of the perks of uh, you know paying for your registration for this event. Uh, and then there's a raffle and it's door prizes. Everybody gets something. And, uh, and they, there's actually some pretty good stuff. I mean, they gave away a couple few CBs. There oh. was some, uh, there were some shackles in there. There was some recovery equipment. Uh, there was a winch at the end. There were some, uh, HID lights. I mean, there's all kinds of lots oh, of gift certificates. Nice. Um, and then a bunch of other little stuff, you know, and I, I got like a, a shirt and a little toy semi truck and a laser pointer and it was a little grab bag and a shirt that I... would never fit me in a million years. Um, I, I don't know how you uh, were able to pay attention with all those things. I'm surprised that you were uh, you could focus on wheeling after getting a little all that, the laser, especially. <laughs> well, this is this is you know I, this uh, the, that picture was taken probably about seven seven thirty or something like that ah. at night. So I mean, the, you know, all of our wheeling or very little of it that we actually got to do that that uh, that Saturday uh, was you know done for the day and and uh, and at, at at night it's it's you know repairs and licking your wounds and and getting ready for the next day mm-hmm. now mind you i hadn't even set up camp yet at this point <laughs> or had bacon more importantly or had bacon <laughs> yeah but i did have dinner so uh, good so it's uh you know after this uh you know it's um, i i got up on the microphone at one point and uh and managed to to give a plug to uh to to some upcoming events and stuff like that and then you know back over to 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 camp and and set up my own camp around the uh, who I was uh, out, you know, out here to wheel with and, and everything. And, um, you know, drinking some beers and telling some stories. And a guy brought a, a projector uh, and a little generator. And, uh, and we set up, a, you know, I had my big easy up and we set up some tarps and everything like that and watched some movies from his trip in Moab oh, this last year. Okay. So that was kind of cool. Watch some wheeling videos um, while we're, uh, you know, kind of sitting around and getting, getting ready for the next day. The next day rolls around and it's bright and early. Let's wake up and, and have some breakfast and and uh, and although I didn't get any bacon that day either, um, <laughs> uh, they they serve us breakfast the next morning. So you get you get a dinner, you get a breakfast, and you get two days of wheeling, and not to mention a door prize and a chance to win a winch. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, the next day, um, you know, it's 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 eggs and sausage, and and uh, and get your breakfast, and and you know, get your lunch uh, staged up, and then over to the staging area for the next day. Now this next day of wheeling was much more aggressive trails. Uh, there was only a few people that signed up because of the intensity of the trails, the, the trail system that we were about to travel. Okay. So the first day was more of a trail type thing, off-road trail, uh, not really def- difficult trees and stuff, but, uh, mm-hmm. not, uh, did they have the, were the trails actually rated or. Oh yeah. So, um, the, the way that the, or, the way the Oregon rates their trails is uh, the same way that a lot of ski resorts, uh, rate their trails. It's easy uh, moderate, more difficult, and uh, most difficult. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 the trails that we were going to be running the, on Saturday were were easy to moderate. Uh, we might have hit and we might have hit maybe a little bit of one uh, you know, more difficult trail. Uh, these are you know green circle, uh, uh, blue square, black diamond, double black diamond, triple black diamond, uh, that sort of thing. So. Um, most of them were going to be, you know, green circle and, and, and blue square, maybe a single black diamond trail with some bypasses and stuff like that. So, but the, the Sunday's trails were going to be black diamond, double black diamond and triple black diamond. Gotcha. Uh, so these are for the more hardcore, the very experienced wheelers, the people who are, uh, that have rigs that are very heavily modified and that are willing to, uh, you know, put themselves and their vehicles into harm's way. And, uh, and obviously the, there's a, there's a very high risk of not only vehicle damage, but also personal injury and, and possible death because of not only of the mountainous terrain that you're in, but also because of the extreme 
uh, conditions of the trails. And um, so we make it our, our way up this uh, this one trail called Firebreak Five, and, and it's a, it's a four section trail, uh, and each section is harder than the next. And there's a lot of rock, there's a lot of dirt, um, and uh, it's a, it's a fairly technical trail. Uh, and when it's wet, it is almost impossible to traverse without uh, you know having a lot of seat time and a and a very well modified rig. And uh, and so we we uh, we had a, a couple guys join us. One uh, was a new XJ owner. Um, he's a younger kid, probably in his late teens. I'm going to say 19, 20 or something like that. Around that age, um, had just put on a four and a half inch lift rough country short arm kit with drop brackets, and uh, and uh, was enjoying his Jeep. He was actually the second owner. Uh, his uh, his dad bought that Jeep brand spanking new this, back in '92 or '93. Oh, okay. I was going to say, is this the red one? Yeah, that was the, that was the red one. Okay, that's one up. Yeah. Uh, we got up on the screen right now. Yeah, and uh, uh, throughout the throughout the the day, I was you know really kind of getting a chance to. We we're actually wheeling at this point in time, and uh, and getting a chance to kind of feel how those shackle relocation brackets were working for me. And I really have absolutely zero complaints, with the exception of one um, where, and this is just more my fault than anything else. And, and it's just a, a matter of adjustability. There is a point in which they bind a little bit. And, uh, which isn't a big deal because at that point in time, the leaf springs start to take over, uh, and, uh, and do what they're supposed to do. Uh, but I did notice a little bit of a bind, uh, at a point at which the, the shackle actually contacts the shackle relocation bracket. Uh, and I'll be taking care of that with just a matter of a small adjustment. So that's not, not, not that big of a deal. Okay. Uh, but we make our way through, uh, this fire break five section, uh, trail and, uh, uh, we break for lunch. Uh, we've got, uh, six or seven rigs with us. Not a big deal. Um, there's going to be three rigs that are go, going to go into our final area, uh, which is triple black diamond. The, the area is called crushers and it is a, it is a massive field of Volkswagen sized boulders. And it's, um, pretty much it, pick a line and go. There's not any one trail. You, you have to go through a filter to get into the area. And then once you're in that area, you have an, an outer edge that you can traverse and then a large bowl of, and when I say bowl, I mean probably, you know, a hundred yards by, uh, 250 yards of just nothing but rocks. And when I say rocks, I mean, literally anything from like the size, you know, four or five feet in diameter to, you know, six feet in diameter. Um, uh, we break for lunch uh, there and, and go into that. Now, some of the pictures you're seeing now is, is, um, a, a rock area before we get to that point. Um, and it's, uh, it's called, uh, uh, I think it's called, it's called the rock garden. And, uh, and I'm, I was kind of skipping ahead there when I started talking about crushers, um, in, in fire break five through the, between the third and fourth section is this area called the rock garden. And, uh, and we had some fun in there with all the, the other vehicles kind of stayed off. And, and then those of us who are a little bit more modified and a little more brave kind of played in these rocks for a little <laughs> bit. And I got to really, really, um, put the, put my Cherokee through its paces. And here you guys can see, um, in, in this one picture, the, uh, the Northwest metal cloak TJ, um, my, uh, my buddy, Eric, who's in a, uh, a heavily modified CJ seven, uh, which is hardly a CJ anymore. Uh, he's probably got a good 50 grand into that vehicle. It is one of the most capable vehicles I've ever seen. And that's what I was riding in the Rubicon with, uh, when I went out there last year. Now that thing it's has kinda, an interesting top on it. That almost looks like a piece of plastic or something he's got on there. Well, and the, uh, the metal cloak TJ actually has, uh, one of the only Jeep lids uh, in existence right now. And Jeep lid is a, uh, is an up and coming company, um, that is offering, uh, this unique product for the TJs. And right now it's the, it's only available for the TJs. It is made out of a, um, uh, polyethyl methylene polycarbonate, and it is, uh, treated with a hardening agent and a UV protection uh, agent as well, making it not only um, 100% UVA and UVB protected uh, or resistant, uh, it's also scratch resistant. And it's, it's basically the same exact manufacturing process as the F-16 fighter uh, fighter jet canopies are made out of. Well, when you uh, say UV it, protection and, and fighter pilot, blah, 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 does that mean that you can see through it? You can see through it. It's 100% see through. And, uh -huh. and in this picture, you can't quite see through it because of the camera camera angle and the glare um, but it is, uh, it has very, very good optics and it actually reduces, if you're in direct sunlight, it reduces the, uh, the, the inside temperatures of the Jeep by about 20 degrees. <laughs> so you can still get to see outside, uh, above like you would, if you didn't have the top on and uh, be a little cooler in the process. Also too, I guess it keeps the rain off of you. And bullets. It is bulletproof. <laughs> well, that's always a plus. Anyway, I didn't to mean to go, I didn't mean to go too much on a tangent there. It was just, uh, obviously something that I hadn't seen before, uh, on a Jeep. 
Yeah, this is a very unique product. Uh, JP Magazine, Peters, uh, Peterson's Magazine have called it uh, one of the most innovative Jeep products uh, in the last decade uh, to hit the market. And uh, uh, so if you guys want to learn more about this, just go to jeeplid.com. Cool. Uh, but that's you can see the uh, the Metal Cloak TJ playing in the rocks. Um, the uh, the red CJ7 uh, took, a, took a turn at it next. Uh, and then, uh, I, I went at it as well and had, uh, had some fun with my, uh, with my XJ and those rocks and, and it did very, very well. Uh, last year I, I played on these rocks and, uh, it was a little bit bumpy. Uh, and honestly the shackle relocation brackets made, uh, the, all the difference in the world. Oh, that's so great could, to hear. Cause I've, I've actually got a set of those things now, not from, uh, from the, the manufacturer you got them from, but from, uh, Iron Man Andy, Iron Man 4x4.fab.com, one of our advertisers on xjtalk.com. Well, Josh, yeah. you know. I think we're going to have to ro- roll this into uh, next week. Uh, we're uh, we're running short <laughs> on time. Good stuff yet. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, there was uh, there was some uh, interesting stuff there to start with, and uh, things are going I'm, I'm smooth here. Really flying, I'm really flying through this stuff uh, pretty fast. I know we were kind of short on time. I was trying to t- trying to fit all of this into this one, but no. I mean, really, it's a full weekend worth of wheeling and uh, and a, and a big adventure. And uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to it all. So mm-hmm. I guess we're going to have to uh, well, have to. No, a, I, it's a great two. story. I think we ought to extend this thing out to the next show and and uh, not rush through it. Actually, you know, have the. Uh, uh, hopefully, at some point, you have bacon, and uh, if not, th- throw that in there. And. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, wow, glad you're glad you're back home, and uh, obviously you are. Well, you're not still out there, right? You didn't set up uh, no, the no, mic. And, okay, I, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm back home. Thankfully, <laughs> I still haven't shaved yet, and <laughs> I'm in need of a haircut. But uh, no, outside of that, uh, it, it was a uh, it was an epic journey. And guys, uh, like I said, I haven't even gotten the best part yet. So uh, tune in next week for uh, for part two of Josh's wheeling adventure up in the Tillamook <laughs> State Forest. And there's there's good. We'll have some pictures of the laser or something. I'm sure. And and uh, next week's uh, next week's show. Hey, Josh, let's get over to our voicemails before we wrap it up. Sounds good. Hey, this is Tony. And this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show. We want to thank you for calling our 24-7 voice line. Yes, we do. Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Hey, this is Nikki G. And I just opened up my mail, and I've got a uh, letter in it from Ford. It says recall notice. So I was pretty excited because I drive a 92 Ford Ranger, and I'm kind of hoping the paint on it is recalled because it needs a new paint. <laughs> but uh open it up to find out it's not my Ranger. It's uh, Wendy's 2008 Escape. It's got a recall, and I'm going to read it to you guys. On the air, so that I think it'll make an interesting podcast. <laughs> it says, safety recall notice 14S05. It says, this notice applies to your vehicle, 2008 Escape, vehicle number, blah, blah, blah. It says, this notice is sent to you in accordance with the requirements of National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act. Ford Motor Company has decided that a defect which relates to your motor vehicle exists in your vehicle with your vehicle number shown above. We apologize for the situation and want to assure that you and you, with your assistance, we will correct this condition. Our commitment together with your dealer is to provide you with the highest level of service and support. They left out the part that was robbing you of all your money. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) On your vehicle, the power steering system may revert to manual steering mode due to an electric power steering system fault related to the torque sensor. An unexpected loss of steering assist while driving would require higher steering effort at lower vehicle speed, which may increase the risk of accident. So it's pretty much like it's your steering, power steering belt broke on your old uh, 55 Chevy. You know how you'd have to manually man, man it over. But uh, so that's interesting. So I'm going to take it to the dealer tomorrow and see what they say. So I'm kind of disappointed it wasn't on my uh, Ranger, particularly with the paint. Or I was hoping maybe the seat got recalled because there's a spring poking me in my butt on that. But <laughs> anyhow, all right, guys, I'll chat you later. Goodbye. <laughs> well, yeah, we could always hope. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, my uh, my 98 uh, Jeep had a recall on it for the airbag. 
And oh, uh, that's an important one. Yeah, I've had uh, I had a uh, a parts uh, store driver make a U turn right smack in front of me. I have some pictures of it somewhere, and uh, I uh, I locked the thirty twos up, and uh, everybody turned to look when they heard that noise, and uh, just T boned him. No airbag. <laughs> so, oh, oh man, which is good because uh, I got like seven hundred bucks out of that one. Uh, and didn't have uh, really any damage, uh, or, or it didn't have the bumper that I had either now, because I'm I'm sure I wouldn't have had any damage then. So uh, we got one more from Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I just want to take a second to talk to the youth of America, <laughs> and I congratulate them on figuring out how to raise their vehicle ten inches and put those god awful ugly fifty inch rims on it with a little teeny tiny. Rubber band tires. Uh, it's definitely not my style, but you guys, generation made the style all your own. I congratulate you for it. But now that you've learned how to lift your vehicle, I, I think it's time that you guys learn to lift your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Only your beloved loved ones should know the answer to boxers or briefs. Not the guy in line behind you at Arby's. You know why there's so many inner city youth in jail? Because you guys can't run from the cops with your pants around your ass like that. Jeez. <laughs> Police aren't picking on you. You're just easy picking. Just easy to catch. Yeah. All right, guys, I'll uh, catch you later. Have a good one. Have a good day. You know, cops are having uh, extra helpings of donuts because they know they can catch these guys yeah. without much uh-huh. effort. <laughs> uh, that's great. Thanks a lot for calling in, Nikki G. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, Josh, I don't know. I, for some strange reason, and I don't know why, I think we're both guilty of this. I didn't think that we would have enough to talk about to fill an hour. Why is it that I always think that? And it's, it's never the case. You know, I started getting nervous that you, uh, you were sending me, uh, you know, some time marks and stuff and I'm like 47 minutes already. I'm barely (laughs) to the halfway point. Are you kidding me? You know, and it's like, so, you know, I'm picking up the pace as I'm getting these time marks, you know, it's like, you know, 27 minutes, 41 minutes, 47 minutes, and I'm getting faster and faster and faster trying to get more information to the story, you know, it's just like, ah! Well, I, uh, well, I, I thought about it and I, I said, well, this is silly because he's going to really have to rush through the rest of this. And, and it's the end part that I think is going to be the most interesting. And I'll, yeah. I'll, th- I'll throw people a bone. Josh wishes that he had installed some of that stuff. He didn't install, yeah. Before he went up, so let's just uh, let's just say we're we're saving the best for last. You guys are going to get to hear about uh, about some carnage that yes. I suffered. Carnage, no uh, no carny, no bacon, uh, but uh, carnage, yes. <laughs> Oh, in the meantime, guys, uh, as you can tell, everybody's got a wheeling story to tell. We'd love to have you guys on the show to uh, tell your own wheeling story. Uh, Go ahead and drop us a line at 530-675-4102. That's 530-675-4102. And we'll get you on the air. And, uh, well, Tony and I will both uh, give you a little interview, kind of like what Tony's doing to me, uh, about your wheeling adventures. Yep, yep. We, uh, We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you being part of the show. I uh, really appreciate the uh, the folks coming to the live show, which is uh, every Thursday night, 10 p.m. Central Time on uh, YouTube.com slash XG Talk. You should go over there and subscribe. And uh, I think that you can actually put a little reminder whenever you see the live event come up and it will uh, notify you so that you don't miss it and you can come to our live show. Yep, I'll post up some of these pictures that you guys are seeing on our Facebook page. Make sure you guys are heading over there and uh, befriending us there. We're on Twitter. Make sure you're following us. Stitcher Radio, TuneIn.com, iTunes, and of course, YouTube for our live shows. And the entire show archive available for your free downloading pleasure over at XJTalkShow.com. So uh, you guys have a great Jeep week. And uh, catch us next week with more uh, fun with Josh's Jeep. (laughs) See you guys then. Take care.